Thank you, panel. That was uh, very exciting, uh, very informative, very controversial, uh, and uh, stimulating. I think we're all thinking how difficult it is to solve all of these problems, but we, we certainly have to do so. I would like to call upon uh, Nicole Bernier uh, from the Institute of Research for Public Policy. Uh, she's the research director, and um, IRPP uh, was a collaborator with Simon Fraser University on organizing this conference, uh, and uh, she's going to say a few words, and then I'm going to finish up. Thank you, Andrew. I won't be long. Uh, I know that you're all busy people and want to go back to your normal activities. Um, I'm I was very pleased to be associated with uh, the putting this conference together. And um, it all started when I first contacted Andrew Wister. Um, we wanted to organize a workshop or a working lunch about the issue. And it grew into uh, this wonderful conference with over 100 delegates and many, uh, v like all good speakers. Uh, outstanding uh, speakers. It's, I think it's been a very successful uh, conference. I hope that uh, you have all enjoyed it. Uh, and we have, uh, we have heard uh, for the IRPP, it is important for us to uh, connect. Uh, we are a pan-Canadian pan organization and uh, it's important for us to connect with uh, people in all regions of Canada uh, because we, lo we are looking at Canadian public policy. And what is striking here, like especially like uh, it was striking for me this morning especially, was that when we discuss problems, we're looking inward, we're looking at you know, our, our um, close reality. But we have to remember that the problems that we face here in Vancouver, in uh, BC, um, are all over Canada, in all provinces. We, ha we are having conferences like this one all over the country, like not the I IRPP, but there are conferences, there are problems, similar problems in all provinces. And it is good to look at problems, it is good to look at solutions, but we have to remember that Canadian governments have a responsibility to uh, design strategies and policies to uh, come to terms with uh, the problems that every uh, um, region f is facing. And certainly we can look at the role of the BC government and we can look at the role of provincial governments generally but there is also a role for national government that needs to be taken into account. We have, uh, so still we have the, the Canada uh, CHA, the Canada Health, Health Act. Uh, so, you know, it is true that social services are under the provision of uh, pro uh, the jurisdiction of provinces, but it is also true that we have a national healthcare system. So uh, it isn't the, the role for the federal government is uh, to be considered uh, when we look at s public policy solutions. So it was just to, uh, a wonderful opportunity for, for the RPP to be here and to hear about your concerns. And uh, we will follow, uh, we will keep following uh, what is happening in BC. And um, I hope you will follow uh, our work in the Faces of Aging program. We have a wonderful uh, program of publication, one uh, coming up soon with uh, how to finance uh, long-term health care, long-term care in Canada. So uh, thank you uh, very much. And I'll, in uh, closing, I would like to uh, uh, thank uh, Andrew Wister and uh, Gloria Gutman to, uh, for the wonderful organization and this one uh, organizing this conference. So thank you to all, to all of you and uh, my pleasure.
lot of thank yous, uh, but thank you, uh, Nicole, because as she said, uh, you know, this all started from a phone call. Uh, Nicole had phoned me up and was interested in, as she said, a smaller kind of a workshop uh, on this particular area, but more from a pan-Canadian perspective. And uh, I thought, you know, we should uh, make it bigger and make it into a conference, and we should link it up to our our annual Friesen lecture series, which we you know, coined as a conference, uh, given this collaboration. And I think that worked out very well. I got Gloria involved, and, and the three of us uh, did the organization, uh, and uh, we really hope that you've, you've gotten something out of it. Uh, I'd just like to say a, a, a few words just by way of kind of you know, pulling some of these things together. We've heard a, a lot of great speakers on many, a plethora of topics. Uh, there are connections among, among them. Uh, there's other topics as well that we, perhaps we could have addressed. We, we certainly um, uh, emphasize the importance of, of providing good quality of care to seniors, and we certainly, um, as Gloria said, are well aware that we have to have a balance between uh, the seniors' needs and um, preferences and, and, and situations and you know the, the those who are providing the care, uh, both uh, at the one-to-one uh, -one level and at the organizational level. But uh, we know we started from the point of understanding home care as you know, one part of a continuum of care system, a system that needs to be seamless. It needs to be integrated, and it needs to be improved in Canada, as well as in the provinces. And so uh, I think what we've tried to do is uncover some of the challenges, issues, and provide uh, some direction for future. Uh, certainly, uh, uh, all of this is, occur is occurring uh, within a very uh, complex and dynamic context. We all know that there's population aging occurring. People are living longer. They're living longer in with more disability, a compression of disability in that disability occurs at the very end of life, but it's more concentrated. Uh, we know that comorbidity and chronic illnesses are becoming more complex. In other words, there's more comorbid conditions. Uh, there are uh, uh, complexities with respect to, to um, uh, how people are able to provide uh, fine supports, informal supports for themselves, given this, this what I call a changing landscape in health and illness. The context is also uh, complicated because uh, we know people want to remain in the community. We know people want to age in place, most people, not all, but most, for as long as possible. So how do we facilitate that? You know, that is a challenge, and we're seeing that it's not easy. Uh, there's greater diversity in older adults, not, with, not, not only with respect to, to the healthcare backdrop and context, but also with respect to diversity in, in culture. And we've heard some of that. We probably could have delved even deeper. But that raises all kinds of issues with respect to providing this kind of care. There's also uh, complexity with respect to the political landscape. You know, we've had a huge economic downturn, and this has ramifications for, for everyone at every level. And uh, it's a challenge for us in the educational sector, but this is, this is all of us. We're all in this together, and, it, and there's going to be other bumps in the road. So you know, this is the context in which we find ourselves, and the fact that you know, the population of older people is changing rapidly. You know, the people 85 plus is the fastest growing population. Even though there's the great boomer generation moving up the age escalator, turned 65 last year, we have about 20 years before they hit 85. But, you know, we've got some things to do in our system in order to provide good quality care and high quality of life to older adults in Canada. Certainly, uh, those of us who heard Kim Carter last night, the ombuds person of, of uh, British Columbia, uh, give her, 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 her talk, her public lecture, 
uh, and, I, and many of you have read her report, obviously, uh, and it's going to, her talk will be on uh, our website, as will all of the talks, by the way, we'll have the, this all, it's all being recorded and will be available to you uh, through the internet. Um, so you can tell others as well. But her, her talk was very powerful, and I'm sure many of you will go and read her report. 460 pages, which she said don't drop on your foot, do <laughs> cause injury. But many, uh, again, a plethora of recommendations. And, and what that tells us is that you know, there are some issues here that we have to address. And, and uh, her, her office's role is a very important one. That's a crucial one. But we're, I, I think that is, it's not only you know, you know, dealing with those issues that come forward to her office, it's telling us about the system. And I, I know a number of the recommendations suggest that the government do some, some, some really good quality evaluation. And I think that's where research really needs to come into play, and that's where we really must have some more understanding, knowledge, information, uh, details about what we're, what we're doing to direct us in the right way. Uh, we heard uh, about um, pan-Canadian perspectives on, on integrated care models, which are ways to, again, create a seamless system through continuum of care. Uh, we heard about uh, uh, palliative care, specific palliative care issues, uh, certainly housing and, and the importance of aging in place. Uh, we moved into challenges in human resources uh, and frontline issues today, where we heard about issues of retention of training needs, uh, standardization of training, standardization of care, of burnout. Uh, you know, this is a very difficult job home care uh, workers are engaged in. Uh, community care workers, if you will, care aides, you know, any of the 26 terms we use. Uh, scheduling issues, uh, quality of care, continuity in care. Of course we'd like to get, you know, a person who develops a relationship with the, the recipient with the client, and, and that's the person they see, maybe just a couple of people. It's not possible on, with the current system. Cultural language issues, uh, wages for workers. Uh, we heard about uh, specific kinds of, of issues uh, related to the live-in caregiver program, to uh, adult guardianship. Uh, so these are, these are the challenges. These are the challenges, and I appreciate the fact that people mention that Home care, you know, it's 4.5 million of the total, 4.5 percent rather of the total health care budget. I think currently there's, without a doubt, an emphasis towards um, a curative model, a, a medical style model of health care, that most of the resources go to that, and that given the context I discussed earlier, it's very difficult to make significant changes to the system as we go. But they have to be made. So I think we need leadership from the federal level. I really do. I, I believe that we need at the provincial level leadership. And I, there has to be some communication. Now, of course, health is a provincial matter, which makes things difficult. But there's the shift in the transfer payments. And this is putting extra pressure, and then it gets downloaded to the health authority level. And you know, where's the slack going to come? Do we want to shift towards you know, more of a privatized system you know, and open up the door for all kinds of new problems? Or do we want to just make our, the current system better? You know, and these are the kinds of issues that, are, uh, that we face, um, I, uh, among others. Uh, and given a very brief time to wrap up, a very complex area, of course I'm going to leave out some things. But this is just some highlights. And I think uh, the way forward is, is for us to, to have these kinds of meetings, these kinds of forum, where we can get together and we can hear the different views and we can formulate new pathways to answer these kinds of questions, new solutions. They don't come without some costs, though. And this is where, you know, if we hear from government that we're going to do more with the same amount of money, uh, how can you make a substantial shift to the system? How can that be done? And so I think we've, you know, governments have to hear. They have to hear what we're saying. And we're, we're saying that, you know, in order to maintain quality of life of older adults, we want to allow them to remain in the community for as long as possible, up to a point. You know, then other types of care kick in, long-term care, residential care, et cetera. But we have to provide that support. And in order to do so, you know, and, and this, is, this is again a, something that can be, that, that actually is a cost saving, but in order to make this work, 
there has to be some investment and has to be some reorganization. So we want to get these messages out to all levels of government. We have to do this across different sectors, across different organizations. So we have to come together, I think, and really um, dialogue and, 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 and lobby. We have to lobby. We have to really put pressure on where we can put pressure so that we can get those kinds of, of investments at, at the different levels. Not just from, government's not going to solve it all. We need research, we need information, we need collaborations, we need demonstration projects, which takes some, you know, significant demonstration, not pilot, small pilot projects, a demonstration project, perhaps in a whole health authority, to find out where these new innovations are going to be. So I just want to finish by thanking everyone for, for just bringing together uh, such wonderful uh, talks and, and panels uh, and questions from the audience. Uh, I, I, in retrospect, I think you know, Gloria and Nicole probably agree that this could have been a much longer conference. Uh, but there's more opportunities, and that brings me to the Canadian Association on Gerontology's 41st annual meeting, which happens to be in Vancouver, and which will, will be um, uh, uh, sponsored by the Gerontology Research Center and the Gerontology Department, of which I'm chair. So we're happy to put on the next Canadian meeting at the Hyatt Regency, October 18 to 20, and I want to uh, implore everyone to attend. There'll be uh, a, a number of sections dealing with these issues and related ones. So please participate, please come. Uh, abstracts are over, but there's ample opportunity for you to, to uh, come and dialogue and participate. Uh, I would also like to um, uh, mention to everyone uh, that uh, you've been given um, another conference uh, 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 promotional material, The Joys and Tears of Living Longer. This is a conference that is going to uh, come just before ours, October 1st and 2nd in Richmond, B.C., put on by Costco, as well as in collaboration with the National Pensioners and Senior Citizen Federation uh, and, uh, uh, and Costco Senior Health and well Wellness Institute. So uh, uh, we have representatives we've heard from Costco, and uh, please uh, attend this conference. Uh, I've looked at the program. It's an exciting program. Uh, in fact, some of our, our people from SFU are participating and will certainly turn up. So please go to that conference as well as CAG, uh, as well as others. And let's, let's, let's participate in, in um, making uh, changes, positive changes, uh, to uh, a, a, an aging Canadian society. Aging is not a bad thing, it's a good thing, but we have to make sure that it's uh, uh, done uh, uh, in, in a fair and equitable manner, in a supportive manner, and in a way that we all come together and do it as one. So thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>